In this video, we'll cover the Vroom Vroom Boom Boom build, and this build is capable of clearing all content in the game. This build can farm between 400 and 500 Neatherin iron per run, allowing you to fully upgrade mass working from rank 8 all the way to rank 12 in a single run. The build is also capable of farming around 100 million gold per hour, meaning you can basically farm your gold and buy whatever you're looking for. In terms of the playstyle, this is essentially a walking simulator. You're going to put up some buffs and walk around the screen while your boulders boom everything around you and basically explode them. On the lower tiers or lower difficulty, it's just going to kill them in one hit. On higher difficulty, it's actually going to knock them back. The knockback effect of boulder can be annoying to some, so I like to mention that so you know what you're getting into if you choose this build. However, when we're talking about playing it within the hordes, which is a great area to farm in the game in Season 5, this knockback can just push enemies all the way to the walls, and then you can just repeatedly bash them with these boulders, taking them down very efficiently. The knockback effect is also a great means of crowd control, adding a large layer of survivability to your character as well. Cataclysm is a huge part of Season 5 for druids. Not every build is using this, but the majority of builds that you're seeing and the majority of builds that are being covered involve Cataclysm. On the tooltip here, you can see it has a cooldown of 23.6 seconds. Now that has been largely reduced by the setup that we're going to talk about in this video. It also has an uptime of 21 seconds. This means with the current setup that you're seeing here, there's 2.6 seconds that you need to account for. And this can easily be done. In fact, you can actually account for this with a much larger gap prior to having gear at this level. If you don't have 100% uptime on your Cataclysm, you can always look at the duration of the timer and start spamming your boulders prior to it expiring. As it expires, you now have the boulders active and you can run around with them dealing damage to the enemies, waiting for that Cataclysm to refresh before beginning the process again. And since I know this is gonna come as a question, the answer is yes, you can have a cooldown that is shorter than the uptime, meaning you can have 100% uptime on Cataclysm for example, you can have something like a cooldown of 20 seconds with an uptime of 21 seconds. The setup I'm using here is not fully masterworked, nor does it have all the proper bonuses for masterworking which would allow for that, but I think this shows off enough for you to understand that it's possible. The most crucial piece in this setup is going to be Dolmen Stone, and you're going to want to make sure that you have a greater affix roll on the Nature Magic cooldown reduction, and then you need to land at least one of the bonus masterworking properties to further boost that. If you land two, you can actually eliminate a ring with cooldown reduction as well, completely freeing up that slot to put anything you want there for additional damage, another aspect, and so forth. Next thing you'll want is the Majolnik Ring. This is going to have bonuses to Endless Temper. Of course, if you can have additional masterworking bonus on the Endless Temper, that's going to increase your uptime, or just higher ranks in general will be more favorable. This is also going to provide a large damage boost while Cataclysm is active, and this is the reason why we're looking for that 100% sustain. In the final jewelry slot, you can run a couple of options here. You can have a ring that has Cataclysm cooldown reduction as one of the tempering properties, or you can run Aerodias, which also has ultimate cooldown. Aerodias has a higher role to ultimate cooldown, making this setup even easier. In fact, I would have 100% uptime in this video if I showed you that. Fortunately, I haven't found one of those yet. So I just want to show you that there are options. And again, if you're fortunate enough to land the bonus on Nature Magic cooldown reduction more than once for the Dolmen Stone, this ring slot is open to a variety of options, say Ring of the Starless Skies for even more damage. It's also worth noting that I choose Accelerating Aspect in this slot if you are going with a Legendary Aspect. This will give you increased attack speed after your core skills crit. You'll have a large amount of critical strike within this build. At the moment we've got just over 40%, sitting at 43%. So a lot of crits, a lot of big damage, and we're even going to have some overpowers in this build as well. Flicker Step is not required in the build. In fact, you can entirely remove it as your gear improves. However, I'm choosing to show this in the video for a number of reasons. One, it has a very favorable affix in terms of damage reduction from close enemies. This is fantastic, especially when you get to bosses that are immune to the knockback effect. Second, each enemy you evade through reduces your active ultimate cooldown by a number of seconds. So if you have a really close gap, all you need to do is evade through a single enemy. It's just seeing in the setup here. However, that can be difficult while the boulders are active. So keep in mind, if you're running flicker step to reduce the cooldown, you want to let the boulders drop off before trying to evade through them. Boulders are going to knock the enemies out of the way of your evade, which can make it difficult to actually land the evade properly, or it can actually kill them before you get there. So a lot of people have difficulty with this, and I've seen a lot of comments in other videos saying that the setup doesn't work or flicker step doesn't work at all. You just need to be mindful of when you use it. 
It's also worth noting that the Affix ultimate damage on Flicker Step is not really viable for this particular setup. We're running Cataclysm, it's up all the time, but the damage it actually puts out really is negligible. What we're really running Cataclysm for is the other buffs that it provides. Lastly, the remaining two affixes, movement speed really good because we're a walking simulator, so we want to move around as quickly as possible. And lightning resist is really good depending on what you have for that final jewelry slot. You may be lacking lightning resist with this setup because of your other gear, paragon, and so forth. So lightning resist is actually needed if you want to be close to the cap. Next, let's talk about hurricane for a few seconds. Look at the damage on this hurricane tooltip. This is actually pretty large damage but Boulder's gonna be knocking everything away from your Hurricane. So the only thing this is actually gonna affect will be mobs that are unstoppable and immune to that effect, but it does add significant damage to sources that are. We also need 100% uptime on Hurricane. This is actually easier than Cataclysm. We're getting a large chunk of that again from Dolmen Stone because Hurricane is also a nature magic skill. Next, we can use Tempering to get increased Hurricane duration on a two-handed weapon, and this will basically cover that. And with just those two things, we can have 100% uptime on our Hurricane. In terms of the weapon, I'm running a polearm here for the additional vulnerable damage, also running vulnerable damage gems. For the third affix, I would also go with Critical Strike Damage. However, this one had a greater affix, so I've left it at this point. Vasily's Prayer is going to transform Earth Skills, or Boulder, into Werebear Skills and provide us with a lot of Fortify. It's also going to give us defensive posture, adding to some of the tankiness of this build. Next, we'll run Insatiable Fury, which is going to make our Werber form true form, giving us additional ranks. This is now going to include Boulder and just continue to scale the damage. Also worth noting here, we get bonuses to Iron Fur. Again, some more mitigation. So although this build looks squishy at a first glance, it actually has a lot of survivability because of the multiple layers of mitigation and the fact that Boulder's knocking back all the hordes or masses of enemies around us. The maximum life is always a benefit here, and since we're running a fortify build, this is going to double dip, so to speak. Also, the bonuses to Ursine Strength are going to be useful because we'll be taking that as a key passive. Now, your key passive is somewhat flexible. For your key passive, you could select Ursine Strength. This will give you additional health. It'll increase your damage and increase the overpower damage. Or you can select Bestial Rampage, which will give you additional attack speed and additional damage, as opposed to the additional survivability that Ursine Strength provides. The choice is up to you. Personally, I've run Ursine Strength and had a little bit more success. But if you want to go for pure damage output, Easter Rampage would be the choice. Just make sure that you're staying in Werewolf form after using Blood Howl for a couple of seconds. In the glove slot, you'll be looking for something with plus to core skills or plus to boulder. We'll be running Aspect of the Changeling Debt. Everything we hit is going to be crowd control, so we'll get a massive multiplicative damage boost from this. And lastly, the weapon aspect is Aspect of the Metamorphic Stone. Spear Boons, you have a choice between Wariness for reduced damage from elites, or you could take Advantageous Beast. Remember, you're going to be knocking back a ton of enemies, so your survivability is pretty good, and you may not need Wariness. This is up to you and may be affected depending on which key passive you choose as well. Swooping Attacks and Avian Wrath are going to be the best two choices here. You're going to boost your attack speed and get more critical strike damage. Again, you should be having a pretty high critical strike chance already with the setup. Calamity to extend the duration of your ultimate skills, just to help ensure that 100% uptime on Cataclysm. If you happen to be having really favorable rolls with your master working, you may not need this, and you can swap over to Bolster, so just add another defensive layer. For the Snake, we'll take Obsidian Slam. This is going to cause every 10th kill to make our next skill overpower. This is going to add a significant boost to damage while we're clearing out the trash, and just allow us to farm more shards per run. You can also opt for Calm Before the Storm to have your nature magic skills give you a chance to reduce the cooldown of your ultimate. However, this seems to have a really low lucky hit chance proc, meaning that you may often not see any benefit from this. And overall, I actually find Obsidian Slam to be a little bit more useful, but choice is yours. For the basic, it does not matter what you select, just put two points somewhere so that you can unlock the next tier. You won't be using your basic in this setup whatsoever as you'll have 100% uptime on Cataclysm. And even if you don't, if there's a small overlap, you'll actually be casting some boulders prior to that point and then just walking around rather than standing to use the basic attack. As soon as Cataclysm comes back, you'll reactivate it and keep going on your way. One point in Heart of the Wild, that's just to be a pass through in order to get wild impulses, which we're gonna to use to increase our damage output. Thanks to Aspect of Metamorphic Stone, Boulder is now a core skill, so we get a ton of benefit from this. Three points in Predatory Instincts to increase our critical strike chance further. Three points into Iron Fur to increase this damage reduction. And here's just an example of one of those layers of mitigation, a massive 32% damage reduction while in Werebear form. And we're gonna be staying in this form all the time. 
you also have a glyph to support this as well. Three ranks into Digitigrade Gate, this is going to give you some additional movement speed. You'll be casting Blood Howl quite often, especially with it resetting off of the kills. So you'll be able to maintain this for a really good portion, if not indefinitely. And we'll actually be able to maintain our Heightened Senses stacks as well, and we'll talk about that later in the tree. One point in Earth and Bulwark, and another point in Enhanced Earth and Bulwark. This is going to be your Unstoppable, your Escape, so to speak. This is what you'll use in order to keep your character alive if you do happen to get caught. One point in Cyclone Armor for the massive mitigation that it provides from a single point. One point in Blood Howl, and you're going to go all the way down to Preserving Blood Howl, which will give you increased attack speed for 4 seconds. And you can often spam this every 4 seconds, giving you a 100% uptime on this ability as well. Now there's some more interactions and reasons why you'd want to spam Blood Howl. We'll talk about that further in the tree as well, but just keep that in mind that you do want to be spamming this ability when possible. One point in Elemental Exposure, and that's in order to get to Endless Tempest. We have several ranks of this from our gear, but we're going to put three points as well. Increase the duration of Hurricane and Cataclysm by 40%. This again ensures that 100% uptime. Five points into Boulder, and go all the way down to Natural Boulder. When you have any Fortify, it's going to have increased Critical Strike chance. We have multiple sources of Fortify, so this is a massive damage boost. Three points into Crushing Earth, you're going to get additional damage to slowed, stunned, immobilized, or knocked back enemies. This should essentially be 100% of the time. One point into Safeguard, Critical Strikes are going to fortify us for percentage of our maximum life. And Stone Guard, while you're fortified for over 50%, you can get a multiplicative damage increase. So basically some common themes here, we're going to have a very high Critical Strike chance, we have multiple layers of mitigation, we're going to be crowd controlling the enemies, we're going to be fortifying, and we're going to be dealing extra damage to all these targets. One point Neurotoxin to unlock in Venom, which is going to give us a large multiplicative damage increase. Three points in Defiance, again multiplicative damage increase to Elites. Two points into Circle of Life, this allows you to spam your boulder and regenerate your own life. So with a really fast attack speed, you regenerate more life. So you can just stand still on stationary targets, spam away, and keep your health topped off. And that's the reason why we continue to spam boulder even while we have 10 of them active. We'll be taking Cataclysm, of course, Prime Cataclysm to increase the duration, and Supreme Cataclysm to make all the enemies vulnerable. Three points into Defensive Posture, which is going to increase the amount of Fortify we gain, and extra damage reduction while fortified, yet another layer of damage reduction. Three points into Quick Shift, and three points into Heightened Senses. These work in a very similar manner. We're going to be shifting back and forth between animal forms. So we use Blood Howl to shift into a wolf, then we can use Boulder to shift into a bear, and you can constantly be spamming Blood Howl whenever possible and maintain full stacks of both of these. The key passives we mentioned, but if you skip through the video or use timestamps, you can choose between Ursine Strength or Bestial Rage, whichever one you prefer. Ursine Strength is going to be a little tankier, while Bestial Rage has a little bit more damage output, but you need to be a little bit more mindful of maintaining both stacks. So let's jump towards the Paragon tree. We'll talk about the legendary nodes and the glyphs. What we're going to run first is Spirit. This is going to allow you to do increased critical strike damage, and the enemy is going to get a multiplicative damage debuff for every critical strike that you deal to them. And we have a very high critical strike chance, so this will essentially be up to 12%, or the enemy will be dead by that point. Outmatch to deal increased physical damage to non-elites and bosses, as well as some additional bonus from the rare nodes. This will include maximum life, nature magic damage, and some willpower. Dominate, you can get increased overpowered damage, and anytime you overpower an enemy, all damage they take is increased by 15% multiplicative damage for 5 seconds. Werebear, you're going to get additional damage while in werebear form. More importantly, you're going to get 15% damage reduction while in werebear form. So we're stacking multiple layers of mitigation, not only from multiple sources, but also from multiple places, even for the same thing, like werebear form. Survival instincts, while you're in werebear form, you're going to deal increased damage up to 60% for every 1% difference in current life between you and the enemy. This is really good for finishing enemies off. Earth and Devastation, your Earth skills are going to deal 10% increased critical strike damage, increased by 20% of your damage versus crowd control bonus. You should have this at 60% because we're stacking this through our tempering. It should be really easy to obtain. Earth and Sky, this can give you bonus to the magic nodes, which is going to include some resist to all enemies and Earth critical strike damage, but it's also going to give you nature magic skills dealing an extra 10% multiplicative damage to crowd control enemies, which we've covered is everything you hit. Fang and Claw will provide a bonus to magic nodes. This will be damage reduction in this situation. And also while you're in werebear form, close enemies will take 12% multiplicative increased damage from you. 
In the final board, we'll be putting territorial and we're essentially just passing through this board. This is the Ancestral Guidance Board. We're not taking this legendary note at this point because unfortunately the interactions between that unlimited spirit and Ancestral Guidance don't work at this time. This may be fixed, so just keep that in mind. This Paragon Tree may be updated. If so, I'll update the build link. Territorial is going to provide 10% damage reduction from close enemies, our final layer of mitigation. This is a very strong build, capable of all content in the game, as mentioned in the intro. So if you're looking for a strong build that'll allow you to do anything that you like, this is a great choice. But be mindful that the knockback can be annoying in certain areas like Nightmare Dungeons, however it can also be beneficial as you push things along the way and kill them or one-shot them as your gear scales. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.